Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're back with the match preview. I'm joined by Jay Brown and Tom Healy. We're going to get straight into it. A uh, big, huge game this Saturday against the old enemy. And Jay, I'll come to you first. How are you feeling going into this one? It's England. They're just off the back of a Euros final, albeit they didn't play that well throughout the tournament. But we know what kind of capable players they have. How are you feeling going into this game? Uh, I think I'd be lying saying there's a mixture of uh, excitement nervousness and that nervousness is probably more on the side of being very scared obviously as you alluded to look this is the European final it's the second best team in Europe going by that I don't think they actually were probably the second best team going by performances in Europe but they would probably feel in terms of performances they underperformed they're still a star to the team obviously it's the start of a new era for them now with Lee Cards he's taken over from Gareth Selke it's a new era for us as well obviously it was a new manager as well like well, obviously it's been a dark kind of couple of years. It, it kind of felt like under Stephen Kinney, the last probably 18 months kind of really, the ship had really kind of sailed and he probably bought just, and as far as he can kind of go. John Era or John, Era, John O'Shea kind of era with the friendlies was kind of a mixed bag. So we're kind of going into this Nations League campaign kind of not really knowing kind of still what to expect um, with a new manager that, let's be brutally honest, we don't still know an awful lot about. Obviously, look, his record with Iceland is very, very good. His record at Jamaica, not so kind of good, which is more recent. So, um, yeah, it's one of those, like, we're kind of heading into a little bit of the unknown, but we kind of probably know that, you know, out of the six games, the two fixes against England, not a write-off, like, because you still kind of want to get an idea of, of where we are and maybe how close to the top level or how much work we need to do. But it's those games against uh, Greece and Finland, and particularly that one on Tuesday night, that's going to be the, the crucial because it was ultimately two games that probably put the final nail in Stephen Kenny Coffin or Stephen, the final nail in the coffin for the Stephen Kenny era, so it'll be vital if we get off to a good start and have something to take away from this window. Yeah, Tom, I suppose to come to you. Uh, welcome to the channel as well, for people who don't know yeah. that you've been a part of the channel for a little while, but this is your first time on. Um, but I suppose coming into this, obviously Lee Carsley is the new manager. Uh, England under a new manager for the first time in quite a while. I think it might be eight years or more. Um you know, what do you think Carsley can bring to this England team? Can he make them play a more expansive style rather than the defensive kind of style they played previously? Or what, what do you think um, they'll set up like? Yeah, look, judging by his work with like the under-21s, obviously won the Euros with them. A lot of the same team now in the senior squad. But there was, like as much of criticism as Southgate got, there was did seem to be a serious amount of... You know, togetherness in that group, continuity for years he was with them. So, you know, if I'm thinking with my head, you know, it should really be a comfortable win for England. But, you know, we might just be catching them at the right time. I'm expecting a big, you know, change of style from us in particular. Because, you know, I think previously I would have said, you know, we'd just been there for the take and we might roll over against a big team and, you know, play ourselves into trouble. But judging by, you know, how he did with Iceland, how he did in his, you know, previous roles. I think we're going to be at least a bit tougher to play against. Hopefully, more pragmatic and just, you know, not just give the way the game away to them. You know, have an actual go to be in the results business. Don't just go out and you know be happy with possession or with style of play. I agree with him and how he's talking. You know, I'd I'd be much more in favour of results rather than a style of play, which, you know, I think a lot of people. We're happy with the idea of Stephen Kenny playing with, uh, you know, more possession-based football than, you know, the previous regime with O'Neill and Keane and all. But I'm excited to see a new style. I think, you know, it will be more focused on results and it will be more focused on winning games, which, you know, I'm far more in favour of. I'd much rather, you know, win a horrible game than, you know, moral victories, which I felt like it was, as Jay was saying, towards the end of Stephen Kenny's run. Yeah, I think you know. I think what's what's telling about Stephen Kenny's reign is there was no manager for so long. John O'Shea kind of took over, did okay. To be fair to him, um, there's not much he could have done. To be honest with you, um, there's not really too many new faces in the Ireland squad, other than maybe Casey McAteer. Uh, we've seen glimpses of what Sammy Smodix can do for Ireland. Um, obviously, we've seen what he can do in the Championship with Blackburn. Now he's moved to the Premier League. Chiodozio Benny has moved to the Premier League again, back again now with Ipswich. So we have 
Um, a fair few Premier League players, which we probably weren't expecting to have um, before the end of the window. So it's good to see some of those players back. But I suppose I have the England squad here. I'll pull it up and uh, we'll have a look through the names. And you can kind of tell me who you, you might be fearful of or, or not fearful of. Um, so the, the team uh, that's it's saying here on England's uh, website, uh, Dean Henderson, Jordan Pickford, of course, will be England's number one and Nick Pope. Uh, from Newcastle then the defenders who uh, Jair will know quite well Trent Alexander-Arnold being a Liverpool fan Levi Colwell who's done well at Chelsea so far this season Mark Way who had a good Euros Ezri Konza who's been solid for Villa uh, Rico Lewis who's, who's been good for Man City uh, Tino Liveramento at Newcastle Harry Maguire John Stones uh, Phil Foden I think he's out now uh, Connor, he's Connor Gallagher Morgan Gibbs White Angle Gomez Cobby Mainu Cole Palmer Declan Rice uh, I can't believe I just said his name, but there you go. Um, forwards, Jared Bowen, Eberechi Eze, Anthony Gordon, Jack Grealish, uh, Harry Kane, uh, Nani Maluiki, uh, Bukayo, Sacco, Anthony Gallier, Watkins is out now. So I don't know who their actual replacements have been. I haven't checked that out yet. They didn't, they didn't call any replacements in. Okay, well, so... He's, That's important to Sky Sports News. And I think um, Maluiki and Cole Palmer, I think, have also pulled out as well. They... They went for assessments and they were just sent back to Chelsea. That's what I've seen on Sky Sports News Tuesday night. Okay, well, that's probably that. That is good news for for uh, from an Irish point of view, obviously. Um, look, I suppose before we kind of move on to the players' matters, uh, there's a lot of kind of controversy towards this game, just being the fact that Declan Rice is coming back to play at the Viva for the first time since I think uh, the last time he played was John O'Shea's uh, final game for the USA. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but uh, yeah, I that, think so. Yeah. So it's just it's it's got a whole crazy little dynamic to it. The fact that he's come in there, uh, he's been one of England's best players for the last number of years. But will you will you be uh, expecting Declan Rice to get a a good reception at the game, or like uh, like for me, I I don't think he should get uh, you know um, a good reception at all. I think whether you're an Arsenal fan or not what he did to Ireland is inexcusable in my opinion and I think if he gets booed or abuse or whatever I think he deserves it for what he's did for what he did um, I've actually first and foremost I'm very surprised we're less than 40 hours away from kickoff and he still it looks like he's going to face I thought he was absolutely stonewall guaranteed to pull out the squad and he wouldn't face the music and then when I see him nip off Lindry in the first day of the season against Arsenal for Arsenal against Wolves like right that could be his escape goal but no Suppose up if he is coming to face music, the only little bit of praise I'll give him in this piece is fair play to him. He's got a pair of balls, either that or he just doesn't give a toss. But um, yeah, he's certainly going to get a vocal uh, reception. Like, look, there's been a lot of talk in media. Even Callum Robinson was saying like he's called friends with with Jack Grealish, and he's even saying, "Yeah, I expect my mate to get a tough reception." And there's no two ways. Well, Jack Grealish did not screw and fuck us over as much as Declan Rice has done. So I think Declan Rice is going to get an absolutely terrible reception and I think he deserves every bit of it I remember the last time he played them in, in the Aviva in 2015 Raheem Sterling got a bad reception but that was just more so down to contract negotiations with Liverpool at the time and Liverpool fans maybe French in frustration this is one where look at the end of the day he's English born and everything else like that but you can't excuse the fact he's still an adult he still used us he still knew exactly what he was doing I still put some blame a little bit on Martin O'Neill but look we're not going down that rabbit hole Um but yeah, like to, to make the effort that he made in terms of the buy-in that he kind of was trying to all call us into and then to just absolutely uh, screw us over is the first time of asking. I'm not usually one like that time, as you mentioned, Liverpool fan. I didn't boo Raheem Sterling when he was still a Liverpool player at that time. I don't normally like to boo players. I was saying to you off camera, I'm not going to give Carzy a hard time. I'm not going to even boo Jack Grealish. I'm not going to boo God Save the King. But by God, I will be very local towards Declan Rice and... I would be letting my feelings known and I'm not going to be shy about that and I've said it to people already. Yeah, Tom, I suppose same question to you. Uh, do you think he deserves um, the bad reception that he'll inevitably get? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, he brought it on himself, really. I, I suppose with Grealish, there's a little bit of uh, get out of jail with that, but, I mean, there's no excuse with Royce. Like, he did get caps with the senior team, kissing the badge, the commitment, as you were saying, to the national team and, then to turn around and obviously go and play for England and the career he's had with them so far. But, I mean, regardless of Rice or England or Grealish, I think the Aviva should be a horrible place to come and play Ireland. You know, I think for too long now, for the last five years at least, it's been sort of a handy game for 
opponents like coming into Dublin. It shouldn't be. I think it should be a place where, you know, teams, regardless of like a gap of talent or whatever kind of level of team we're playing, I think uh, first thing, it should be a horrible place to play. You know you're going to be in for a fight. You know you're going to be in for a tough game. Um, but, you know, obviously with England and Rice and all that, it's it's going to be heightened even more. Yeah, well, look, I don't really have any issues towards Carsley. Uh, he's out there. He's trying to forge a career as a manager. He's probably got the best job that uh, he could have ever wanted, regardless of being an Irish man or not. I mean, you look at so many people who would want the England job, like Pep Guardiola would want it, uh, Jose Mourinho would want it. There is big names out there who would want that job. Uh, you know, so the fact that he's, he's kind of came a similar route to Southgate, he's been well regarded as a coach, and he's won the under-21 Euros uh, with the English team, you know, t- says to me that he's very well regarded. The fact that he was even considering coming to Ireland, I think the FAO should be blessed that he even, like, maybe had a sniff towards it, but the fact is he he definitely knew that Southgate was um, probably going to walk away after the the most recent tournament there uh, in the summer. So, I would say he knew all along that, that that was his kind of next path in line, and look, it made sense um, for him. Grealish, again, I think one of you said it already, he didn't really take the piss as much as Declan Rice. He pulled away when he felt as though uh, he could have got a senior cap or whatever. Um, he didn't take senior caps away from uh, full internationals or anything like that. So that I have genuine reason to not like Declan Rice. And that was because he played three games for Ireland, used us and um, yeah, just, just left us hanging after we gave him the opportunity to put a stage out there for him to perform on and then he went and did that so look yeah uh, i suppose getting away from that the other players that were in the the england squad there like you've got players like harry kane and stuff like that we've seen how dangerous he's been he's uh, lee carsey said he'll remain as captain as well so the likelihood of him playing is very strong but kyo saka is a very uh good winger one of the best of the premier league anthony gordon as well um i'd be surprised if greedish started to be honest with you anyway but uh yeah. Yeah, but their midfield doesn't doesn't kind of scare me that much, to be honest. I mean, Conor Gallagher, is, yes, he's a good player. Um, you're not amazing, though. Kobe Mainu, he's been good for Manchester United. Um, and then you got himself there at Arsenal. Uh, but Morgan Gibbs-White, I mean, yes, he's good. Again, doesn't doesn't scare me. Angel Gomez, again, Lille, doesn't scare me. But the, the defence is quite good with uh, John Stones. Uh, Harry Maguire, I think if they play a back three, Harry Maguire will be good for them. And either Gway or uh, Colwell there. And then you've got Trent, who probably won't play. They could potentially play Rico Lewis instead of uh, Kyle Walker. So, for me, this isn't as strong of an England team as probably would have, you would have imagined in, in recent times, Jerry, is it? Do you not think Trent won't start right back, given the way he started the season? You, or well, certainly won't be. Well, you know, I'm just going off the Euro. Well, I suppose it's Lee Carsley now rather than. Yeah, it's the, I, I, well, Kyle Walker isn't in the squad. He's barely kicked the ball for. That's what, Man I, think, City. That's what I think Lewis would play. Yeah, well, like Lewis is. I haven't obviously watched Man City as much. I watched them the first day against um, Chelsea and I watched a bit of their game against West Ham the other day, but I was at a stag and could any saw my view that was a little bit blurred, if I'm to be brutally honest. But from what I have seen, he has looked pretty, pretty good. Like, um, I know what you're saying. Like, oh, given some of the absentees, like Ford and Parma, who I think would have been an absolute shoe in to start, given the way he started the season as well. And Carsey knows him so well from that 123 or 121 team, which was, was basically on the 23 team that won the European Championships last summer. And obviously, uh, Bellingham and Ford, and I think I've already made reference to that, but like, it's still a very, very strong team. Like, we're, we're talking about, like, oh, we've a couple of Premier League players, but like, with no due respect, there were clubs that were all going to be. Severely struggling to uh, stay up this season. Like we've, we've named out players there, more, vast majority of them obviously playing for teams that are going to be challenging for European places. I know someone like Morgan Gibbs White Forest are probably going to struggle. Struggle with Angel Gomez, Lille. Uh, I think they're in the Champions League. I don't even know. I don't really follow the French league that much. Obviously, came through for United. Like Harry Kane, how fit is he this kind of season? That's probably the only one thing you're kind of banking on. It's like how fit really are some of these players? Like Bundesliga, I'm back two weeks. Has Kane really got much football in his belt? Like we've seen the reason why like so Foden isn't in the squad. He hasn't got much football. He hasn't probably fully recovered yet from the Euros. It's a quick turnaround and stuff like that. Like it's kind of gas as well. Like I know I know what you mean. You're trying to think from the point of view like of what potentially could have been there. When you see the likes of Angel Gomez, Morgan Gibbs White still might be coming up, but let's be brutally honest, they would absolutely walk into our team. And our our midfield also is looking very, very weak at the moment. Josh Cullen obviously not been there through injury. Um 
doesn't kind of quite help. Obviously, the, probably the most encouraging thing, I know I don't want to deflect too much away from the main topic of the conversation, but the way Jason Lumbey started this, this season is good and getting the goal. Like, But look, we still, I still don't think we should uh, kid ourselves to how good and how strong this team is. Um, the only thing is, who are they going to go with um, left back? It wasn't Who was their first choice left back against the Euros? They didn't have a first choice uh, left back. They went with Trippier. But Trippier, sorry, yeah. So that's what I thought. And now he's gone into retirement. And like, just from going through the names you've called out there, like, there's no real standout obvious candidate who they're going to play left. Like, um, even Pimento, even. Yeah, yeah, he probably would be. But again, like, he, again, in the category of like, from Paul's, like, oh, what we potentially could be facing, that's not exactly going to frighten you. Like, he's not a very, very seasoned well, Premier League footballer, never mind even an international level. That's what mm. I'm saying about the. Uh, I yeah. don't, don't fear them as much as I would have feared the Euros team that were in the final. Maybe you know. Yeah, but like, I know what you mean. But like, just still not like it. It's like Yeah, but we've get well, like, too we've, much false hope here. So I'm trying to kind of say it like. Yeah, but we've we've also come up and faced against um you know different teams Belgium uh we come up against um Hungary. Yeah, are you are you are you are you using the most recent example of the game against Belgium? No, the one with Ogbeni. Okay. Score on the thing. Like we've come up and even still that was a that was that was a half hour Belgian team of which we broke yeah. Yeah, but we what was the score in Dublin against France? Was it one 0 Yeah. So one nine no, yeah. And they were that's a much better squad than this current England squad. So yeah. like we ha- we we have got performances in us. I'm not saying we're gonna win the game, but I'm just saying it's uh, it's a game where I wouldn't be as fearful as had they had the stronger team as they did previously, um, the yeah. likes of like their midfield is completely depleted from compar- in comparison to uh, the Euros. Their defence is probably as well. And I mean, if you take Harry Kane out of the striker department, who else have they got there? Because Ollie Watkins is in the squad. So, yeah, that's why I'll be saying. And obviously, it looks like Ivan Tony won't be part of plans going forward. So, yeah, like uh, Harry Kane is the only option for an out and out striker in terms of, I said, like, there could be a vulnerability there with him is in like how fit is he really like he, he didn't really look particularly fit at the Euros he looked like he was carrying a knock from the end of last season and look as as Tom said in his opening introduction himself like there is a, there is also the feeling of like in terms of glass half full if you want to look at it from that point of view from Ireland fan like could we be getting them just at the right time new manager like some of these players still a little bit rusty still maybe a little bit of a mental hangover from the Euros like a lot of our like, Ireland team is it really going to change much like it's a case of McAteer is only a new name in the squad. Like so it's a relatively familiar enough team and in terms of internationals uh football pedigree, like they're used to playing with each other. Whereas a lot of these England players first time playing with each other and stuff like that. So see like if you, if you definitely would be looking down that route. I, again, backing up what you were saying, Paul, in terms of the names you called out, like well, it's not as frightening as what it could have been if you were to be from the optimistic and half glass full point of view from Ireland. Yeah, but I suppose as Tom uh, we kinda spoke over it there but how are you feeling about it like would you be as fearful as maybe you would have been looking through the Euro 2024 20, tournament there in the summer and thinking going oh no we've played in a couple of months but now we've obviously seen the squad is quite different Look, they, yeah they're obviously still a strong team I do think it does make a difference Bellingham, Fold and Palmer, Watkins they are huge losses like you can't underestimate that obviously it's still a really strong squad as Jer said midfield is probably the area you'd look at that you know, even though it is only Gallagher, Mainu, Rice, you know, that's still serious levels above what we have. Uh, I'd also look at, especially if Saka plays on the right, who are we really going to have in at left full? Is it going to be Scales or maybe O'Dowd or, or Brady? I don't know who he's going to... You know, I wouldn't have too much confidence in whoever he puts in out there against Saka. Even if it wasn't Saka and it was Bowen or Gordon or... Like it, if so many people who could play out there on either wing, really, even Seamus Coleman on the right, you know, he's still a lot to contribute to Ireland, but obviously slowing down a lot recently. Even if it's Doherty, I'd probably rather Coleman in there. Uh, yeah, midfield and the wing areas are the two places that I'd be particularly scared of. But, you know, you already spoke about it. Their fullbacks aren't exactly, you know, what they used to be either. No Kyle Walker anymore. It's going to be one of or two of uh, Livermento, Trent, and Lewis, obviously. Um, so if we're going to be playing, which you would think we'd be playing mostly counter attack, Ogbeni, Smodix on the break against whoever they're playing with, who's going to be obviously pushing forward and the way they want to play, I think, you know, we might find a bit of joy there if you're looking at 
where we can, you know, exploit them. But you are kind of clutching at straws when looking at the areas we can attack them. Yeah, well, I think well, the one thing as well we got to remember is that Lee Cars will be looking to impress as an uh, interim manager because he'll yeah. want the England job. So we can't take that um, away as well. So they, they will be looking to put on a performance. Well, he will be, whether the England team do or not. Um, but let's, I suppose, look at our lineup and our squad and kind of look at where we could be potentially uh, positive or negative, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, I mean, the only thing I would say about Seamus Coleman is he's a very good 1v1 defender, no matter what kind of age he's been. He's been very, very good in that regard. And I would probably say that he could go with a Seamus Coleman uh, right side and Matt Doherty left side, um, I would think, uh, just for you know to even things up a little bit there. Because I don't think Robbie Brady defensively up against the Bukayo Saka is a good uh, mix. But anyway, look, our goalkeepers, Quiven Keller, Mark Travers, Max O'Leary, Seamus Coleman, Matt Doherty, Darrow O'Shea, Nathan Collins, Jacob O'Brien, Andrew Oma, Bamadelli, Liam Scales, Callum O'Dowda, and Robbie Brady. Uh, in midfield, Will Smallbound, Jason Malone, Lum- sorry, Malumbi, Alan Brown, Jason Knight, Casey McAteer, attackers, Adam Eda, Evan Ferguson, Sammy Smoddix, Chiodoziog, Benny Callum Robinson, and Troy Paris. Uh, yeah, Jer, um, I mean, when you're calling out the names, they don't fill you with huge optimism that we, you know we're going to score goals or anything like that but uh what i do see there is kind of pace and athleticism amongst the squad there that's the only thing i would say yeah it very much kind of ties into a little bit of what um tom was saying there like obviously the scary toss of so like particularly if Kaya Saka like running at her fullbacks or whoever's on the other side like it's going to be vital that the likes of Chio or whoever else is on the other side that they you know they double up and, and back back because it is going to be very much like a compact and numbers kind of type job. Yeah, like I think um, you're looking at like, and you're trying to look and think to who's been our main foreign player so far this season. I know there was a lot of talk on off the ball about dropping Collins into the six for this game. I think it's a, a potential option going forward because he's so kind of good and comfortable on the ball. But I think this is the type of game where we know we're going to be backs against the wall. We need kind of as many defenders and informed players in that position. And the way Collins has started this season has been very encouraging for Brighton. I think they've only conceded well, I say they've only conceded four goals Brent, in three games. Brentford. But fa- or Brentford, sorry, not Brighton, apologies. But uh, like, you have to factor in they had an away trip to Anfield where he was probably arguably Brentford's best player. Um, like you alluded to, Sammy Smallux, you know, he's been there, done that, proved at championship level. Even from the glimpses so far, like I know he, he only came on for a cameo against Liverpool. He's only just signed, I think, a day or two before that. But he still looked lively. It might have been the cleanest of finishes, but he's up and running in terms of scoring the Premier League with Ipswich and even bagged in the few for Blackburn before he went. So you were looking for something kind of um out of him as well. Um like you talk about Seamus Coleman, yeah, like them one on one situations. While the legs might be slowing down, the minds, if anything, seems to be kind of getting quicker with Seamus. I thought like even okay, I was kind of a bit critical in terms of the effort that Belgium put into the friendly game back in March, but he still done a very, very good job on Doku. Still thought he'd done a very good job in the friendly game against Hungary. And the fact now that he's got uh, give or take as good as I don't know how long he played, but he's basically got give or take two full games under his belt over the past week by helping get up to match sharpness. I wouldn't be kind of too worried about him. I was making reference as well, albeit at championship level, it's a big drop down to what these England players were used to. But Malumbi, who had a frustrating season last year, I think it's fair to say, and obviously an injury the second half season didn't help. And then you see him get involved in stuff in pre season, you're kind of like, is his leg going to knuckle down or what? But no, it looks like. He has. He started the season really well for West Brom, who've started the season pretty well themselves and got a goal last weekend. Um, Smallbone, haven't really seen much. It's a handsome only thing I know by all accounts. I don't think he actually played that bad in their first game against Newcastle. Um, so yeah, they're kind of on the main players who are going to be looking for. I'd expect it's going to be Paris up top, just purely on the basis of he's the one who's played most football ahead of um, Adam Eda. Slightly concerned after kind of scoring all around him in pre season that the goals have started to dry up when it matters the most. Look, it's only four games in. I think he's hit the crossbar. He's had a goal just out for VAR. By all accounts, he's still been looking sharp and playing well for an ace at Alkmaar team that are going well. So you do kind of think if he sticks at it, eventually look could kind of go his way. So he's probably the most sharpest player. And he's a little bit more athletic and pace here than I'd say than either. So like for the type of game that we're going to play, we're going to need someone who's going to run as much as they can so I think you'd be kind of looking to him as well um, to have a good game and impact on Saturday Yeah Tom I suppose is there anyone in the squad maybe that Jerry didn't mention who you, you're kind of excited to see or maybe like even like a Casey McAteer I don't know too much about him I haven't seen him play that much 
Um, but he seems to be quite a good player. Yeah, like Jer said it already, but I think really the main man is going to be Smoddix. I think it is important, really important, like where we play him. Um, I thought in the couple of games O'Shea had, we were kind of shoehorning him in on the left wing. And even at the start for McKenna at Ipswich, he was kind of playing him on a wide positions. But I, I think it really is important to play him kind of just off the striker, nearly as a forward himself, because he's just he's unbelievable when you see him running in behind, playing off a bigger strike. I know he said Parrot might start, but I think if he does fit, I would play him. I think in the couple of games for Ipswich so far, you really start to see a serious duo sort of forming there with the lap. Uh, because I think they are kind of starting to get that right with position and for Smoddix. Aside from that, uh, like left wing, you would kind of be concerned about. I know he said McAteer, but he is predominantly kind of a right winger, if not more central than anything. Uh, I don't know if he has much experience on the left. I'm sure he could do a job out there if needed. After that, you're kind of looking at Jason Knight maybe on the left, or I don't know if he'd play uh, Robbie Brady out there at all anymore, but that would be kind of concerning for me. Ogbeni, obviously, on the right is going to be one of our big threats, but I do think it is Smoddix. If we have any chance of getting a result here or, you know, scoring at all, it's going to, be, it's going to come through Smoddix. Mm, there's always the possibility of playing Callum Robinson off the left as well, who's, who's oh, yeah. done okay there uh, when he's played there. Uh, but usually when he plays as a forward, he finds himself kind of all over the place. So not too long ago, he was our kind of... Uh, mm-hmm. All, yeah. uh, you know our, our all hope and glory also, man, yeah. before uh, you know the likes of Ida and um, Paris and, and, and those uh, Evan Ferguson all came to kind of uh, came to prominence and came came of age um, but I suppose yeah like looking at the, the t- Evan Ferguson I don't think will I don't think he'll start but I think he'll be involved at some stage yeah. um, Will Smallbone will probably be our most creative player um, and then yeah like our defence I mean you've got I mean does Jake O'Brien play? He hasn't got a minute for Everton so far. Well, he has played the Carabao Cup game. But then you've got Nathan Collins who comes back into the side, who I think we missed in the last international window. Um, Dar O'Shea, I think he'll definitely start. Um, he just got his move to Ipswich as well. And I think uh, Scales will probably start. I think it will continue to be a back three and I pro- probably foresee Scales on the left side of that, Dar O'Shea somewhere in there, and then it's the other centre back, whoever that is, at Oma Bamadeli, Jacob Bryan, or whoever. I, th- well, I think I don't. He actually he only has really a choice of Collins. Into. Yeah, uh, Collins. Collins would be the other. One. I've just yeah. answered my own question. Um. So yeah, uh, I suppose I think I'd say Kelleher being goals. So I'm just kind of roughly guessing there. Um. And I think that's kind of up front. I'd say probably Edian Monarchs. Um, but do you think Troy, which I see why you would say that, and obviously he scored the most recent goal uh, for us in the Aviv uh, against Hungary to win the game, and he came on that uh, he came on in that game and he looked hungry, and I know O'Shea would probably be a big fan of his as well. So look, it look it's um, I'm not going to say it's looking optimistic because it's not, um, but it's a bit more optimistic than uh, it would have been. That's probably the yeah. best way I could put it. So I was going to get the score predictions just to finish off. So Jerry, I'll come to you and then we'll work our way back to me then. Uh, so I'll go you, Tom, then me. And uh, if you want to add goal scorers, as in give their names, feel free. The typical negative charge with these predictions. 2-0 England. Uh, Kane, because he always fucking gets one. And uh, I'll just say Trent, just for the sake of uh, I'm going to try and be optimistic and say one all because I think that is optimistic uh, Saka because I just can't see how we're going to control him on that left side really no matter who we play out there and then Smolik as I was saying I think if we have any goal threat the team it's going to be through him yeah I mean the last game we played against we got beat 3-0 wasn't it in COVID yeah the COVID game that it's probably because it's COVID no one really remembers <laughs> Yeah, Calvert Lewin actually scored a, a penalty. There you go. Yeah, um, I think the McGuire even scored as well. I can't remember. Yeah, but anyway, uh, it was a ride off that game. But uh, I, I'm kind of feeling a little bit of the one-one as well, Tom. To be honest with you, I mean, a one-one is like a one-nil win for us. Um, right. Just with the squad that they have and stuff like that, I'm not really too. I think Hay- Hamer should probably have a go. 
And I think if if we can kind of get at them early and score a goal early, because I think we've scored a couple of early goals to Viva recently. And, um, you know, the, not too early, not, not Shane Duffy against Denmark early, but if we can kind of get a goal in the first 20 minutes and get the crowd behind us like properly and make it a kind of like a cauldron and Declan Rice is getting jeered and stuff like that, then I could see us getting a 1-1 and I could see them get just piling on the pressure and getting a late goal. But like, actually, no, no, I can't go 1-1. My, my head wants me to go 1 My heart's going to go 2-1 to them. And I don't know why. Your heart? Huh? Your heart is going to go 2-1 to them. Yeah, well, I'll show you my head. Your so heart? <laughs> my head, my head, my head, my head. Sorry, it's late in the day, lads. I, 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 nearly, back. I nearly had, a, I nearly had a heart attack. I think, I think if we can keep it similar to even the France game, uh, March or last year, like as long as like it's still just that one goal, and, you, and there's still the dream alive. If we get one, we're at least taking a result from this game. Like that was kind of what kept us kind of going the France game. That's why we kind of threw cautions to win even the last ten minutes. Just something like that would be kind of great as well. Like like you're alluding to like when we scored too early against the Dutch or against the Danes that time, even like the Dutch game last year, like he just was penalty at five minutes. And you're kind of like, great. Like we could, you could, you could sense blood there, but we didn't capitalize it. And next thing we lose two one and the game just kind of fizzled out. Like that's kind of, I get what you mean. That kind of way. You just kind of want to keep it. As long as you kind of keep it alive and keep it competitive. I think that's kind of the main thing we're all really hoping for. Yeah, well, exactly. And yeah, sorry, I did mean my head, not my heart. I'm not long back from holidays, lads, and I haven't slept properly in a week. So uh, forgive me for anyone who's going to give me stick in the comments. Probably the closest we'll get to a Declan Royce interview on this channel. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, yeah, listen, lads, uh, thanks very much for coming on. Uh, let us know what you think the game is going to look like uh, in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will speak to you all soon with more content to come over the next couple of days and into next week as well. So we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.